Hi guys, Dr. Amy Kellen here. So I'm hanging out at home, my love sack, um, because I'm under sort of a quarantine, like probably the rest of you are, or at least a social distancing. Um, during this time, I have been doing a lot of reading. And as you might expect, if you know me at all, I've dug deep into what's going on with COVID-19 and stem cells and sort of you know, is there something there that we can talk about? And I think that there is. So this is this is about that topic, uh, COVID nineteen and stem cell therapy. You know, what's the deal? What's the potential? Um, I'll start out by talking about a study that many of you probably read about if you've been following the news at all. Late late uh, February, so about a, a month ago, there was a study that came out in in uh, China that took place in a hospital in Beijing where they had seven patients with symptomatic COVID-19 lung infections, and they gave them umbilical MSC, so umbilical mesenchymal stem cells. These are stem cells from obviously someone else, uh, from umbilical cords that were taken from healthy babies. And then they, they took the MSCs, which are the mesenchymal stem cells, um, and then they infused them in the IV in these patients who had COVID-19 uh, respiratory symptoms. And, and then they followed those patients for 14 days to see if they would have any improvements over, you know, kind of other patients. They also treated three patients with placebo. So they essentially gave three patients nothing. And, um, and unfortunately, those patients did worse. So the patients that were given the stem cells, um, they were all, some of them were sort of moderately ill, some of them were severely ill, and one of them was critically ill. All of them, within two to four days after getting the IV, mesenchymal stem cells, all of them had improvements in respiratory symptoms, um, their shortness of breath got better, their oxygen levels came up to where they were, uh, were normal, essentially over 95% um, oxygen, uh, and they all had improvements in system you know, weakness and things like that. All of those patients at, by 14 days had left the hospital and were considered to be stable to go home and, uh, and to go about their lives. Of the three patients who did not get the stem cells, those three patients, at the time of publishing of the story, one of them had died, one of them was still in the hospital with severe symptoms, uh, and one of them was critically ill with uh, ARDS, or uh, Acute Respiratory Distress uh, Syndrome. So those three patients did not do so well. When you dive into the data on those seven patients and kind of what happened with each patient, uh, it's really interesting because First of all, between two and four days, again, symptoms really got better as far as the respiratory symptoms, which was amazing. Um, one of this, this one guy's x-ray, the guy who was in critical condition, you know, his x-ray, he had this sort of ground glass whiteout on his x-ray, which, which is classic for ARDS, but essentially just this white stuff everywhere. Um, and and that actually resolved after about a week, which is is pretty fast for ARDS to go away. So that was pretty awesome. The other thing with that guy is he actually had symptoms of multi-organ failure. So he had elevated liver function tests, he had elevated cardiac markers um, that signified that he was probably had severe damage in liver and heart. But within two to four days of getting his stem cell, those, those stem cell treatments, those markers all came back down to normal levels. Um, similarly, CRP, which is another marker of inflammation, um, was very high in all those patients before and came down after the stem cell treatment. And they also saw improvements in some of the other things, like they saw a decrease in pro-inflammatory cytokines, um, like IL-10 and uh, TNF-alpha. They saw uh, improvements or increase in anti-inflammatory cytokines. So in general, these patients who got treated with the IV stem cells did better. Now, it's a very small study. We can't jump to big conclusions from it, but no, no one got hurt. It was very safe. This is a 40 minute, 40 minutes total IV treatment and that was it. So I think that's really encouraging. And, and when you know about how stem cells work and what's been studied in the past as far as these MSC stem cells, I think it makes sense. So we know that mesenchymal stem cells in general um, can be anti-inflammatory. We know that they can be immunomodulatory, which means they can affect the way your immune system is acting. They can up or down regulate it depending on kind of what the environment needs, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Um, and there's even some studies that have shown that they can be antibacterial, antiviral um, as well. And then of course you have the, the, uh, the ability of these cells potentially to actually um, 
increase healing and increase regeneration of the tissue. So if you have damaged tissue, then the potentially those, these cells can also um, increase the healing of that tissue, uh, which may be part of the mechanism. Although most of these studies that are talking about this right now are talking more about the inflammation and the immunomodulatory components of these cells and less about the engrafting and becoming you know, a different type of tissue or even the healing part isn't talked about quite as much. Um, so the other things that are, are, are being looked at right now are using nebulized or um, aerosolized uh, exosomes, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. That's another study that's going on in China right now, is actually putting exosomes um, into the lungs directly to see if that will help. And then there are you know, a couple of other studies that are already going on in different places of the world using different types of stem cells for different things. So let's talk a little bit about this virus in particular and what it does um, and how it causes so much inflammation and damage and why we may be able to help some of that damage with stem cells in the near future. So COVID-19 is the sort of syndrome that, that we get from a virus which is called SARS cov 2 SARS-CoV-2 is a virus very similar to the virus that caused SARS and that caused MERS. Um, so it's a little bit different, but it's an RNA virus. And the way that it works is it attacks a specific receptor called the ACE2 receptor. ACE2 receptors are found in all different tissues in the body, but there's a lot of them in the lungs as well as in the capillaries. Um, there's some in the heart as well. Um, as other tissues, but in the liver, which is why that guy probably also had the liver problems. So uh, this receptor is responsible in a lot of ways for helping regulate blood pressure. So it's really prevalent in the body. So anyway, the virus essentially gets onto the receptor, gets into the cell, and then once it's in the cell, uses your own cells uh, replication machinery to replicate itself because it otherwise it can't do that by itself. So that's, you know, gets into these cells in your lungs especially and starts replicating. Then your immune system, because what it, you know, is very smart and what it does is it, it reacts and starts uh, cranking out these um, different things to try to kill the virus. Um, what happens though in a lot of these cases is that these this, your immune system becomes overactive. And so it kind of overshoots the problem. And so you get what's called a cytokine storm, where basically you're getting just tons and tons of uh, these cytokine, cytokines um, that are being released to try to kill the virus. Unfortunately, those cytokines though can also damage the lung tissue. So you get damage to the lung tissue, um, you start getting swelling and fluid in the lungs, uh, which is called exudate or edema, um, and then the fluid in the lungs, because you have a lot of fluid, you can't breathe, you can't, you can't do air exchange. Um, and that's when you get that x-ray full of that sort of ground glass appearance that's you know affecting every lobe in your x-ray, and that is what's called acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. Um, ARDS uh, is hard to treat because it's not uh, necessarily a pathogen that's causing it. It's not, you know, the virus itself is not really what's causing ARDS. It's, uh, it's really more your, your own body just reacting too strong to the virus. Um, ARDS has been around for a long time. That's not something new with COVID-19. ARDS affects about uh, 20,000 Americans a year. It's usually caused by uh, infections, things like pneumonias or sepsis or trauma, um, or there's some other things that can cause it as well, but it's, it's been around for a long time. Unfortunately, ARDS, again, not COVID related, just in general, has a mortality rate at between 30 and 50%. So this is something that is very hard to treat. The, the treatment is essentially symptomatic care. And symptomatic care just basically means um, we're gonna put you, you know, get you oxygen, put you on a ventilator if we have to, uh, make sure we get you IV fluids, make sure we you know, give you antibiotics just in case. But essentially it's waiting kind of waiting it out and waiting for your body to stop attacking itself and to start repairing itself enough to get you off the ventilator. Um, so it, it's really tricky to treat. So you can imagine the body's attacking your own lung tissue, then if there was a way to get your body to not do that or to kind of decrease that inflammation, that would be great. And that's one of the things that we know that stem cells can do. Um, by looking at other studies in the past on other organ systems, uh, we know that stem cell therapies can potentially be beneficial for a lot of autoimmune disorders. So there is precedent uh, in using these types of regenerative, regenerative therapies to help try to decrease inflammation and to try to change immune systems gone wild, <laughs> um, which I think should be its own new TV show. Um, 
anyway, so that's that's that. And I think that hopefully that makes sense for you. So the other thing that's being talked about a little bit uh, now, and I think we'll probably hear more about it, are exosomes. So if you have a big stem cell, like my head, like this, stem cells are big. Um, when they want to communicate with other cells, either other stem cells or other types of cells, one of the ways they do that is by releasing these little bitty exosomes. So you've got a big stem cell, you've got little bitty tiny exosomes that get released and they kind of float around. Those other cells can then take them in and the exosomes can become part of that cell. The exosomes can then change how that cell behaves behaves. So what's cool about exosomes is you get a lot of the same benefits as re regular stem cell therapy potentially without having to actually get the DNA from somebody else. Uh, there have been several studies that have that have used exosomes specifically for different types of ARDS caused by um, like pneumonias, by bacterial infections and things like that. And they give the exosomes just a uh, through the air, like that, through that trachea um, or into tracheal tubes. Uh, and they've seen benefits in terms of improvement in symptoms uh, and decreased you know, lung edema, decreased inflammation, things like that. So exosomes are very interesting that way. The other thing that's been looked at with exosomes, there are a couple of studies now um, that have shown that exosomes may have some antiviral activity. So there's some uh, work with hepatitis C looking at using exosomes, but exosomes, uh, basically stopped the, or not stopped, but at least decreased the virus replication in hepatitis C and seemed to work synergistically with medications. Uh, similarly with influenza, there was a, there's a pig model that basically shows similar kinds of effects that exosomes and the microRNA from exosomes uh, causes the virus not to be able to replicate as well. Um, in the presence of influenza. So that's pretty cool. Those are, of course, different viruses than, than uh, the coronavirus family, but there could be some similarities there in terms of antiviral activity. We don't know for sure yet. There are several uh, drug companies out there right now that are already working on um, changing their products or using their products uh, to start working um, and see if they could be helpful for COVID-19. There is a company that has a product called uh, Multistem, that is by, I was going to look at my little notes here, um, Athersis makes a product called Multistem that's already been uh, shown in uh, their study, their phase 2A study, to be effective in um, helping patients with severe ARDS. Um, this was, again, not a COVID-19 study, but this was done before that, and those patients did well out through a year and didn't have any side effects from that. Um, Mesoblast also has a product called Remistem Cell, I think I'm saying that right, um, that is actually a graft versus host disease stem cell product, but they have shown some efficacy with that for COPD, which is another lung disease, which may uh, again translate into being able to help with ARDS as well. Um, and then there are some exosome companies like Chim Chimera Labs, which I'm familiar with. I know those guys are working to try to get some of their products to uh, into preclinical pre studies so they can start looking at exosomes um, a little bit closer to see if they're beneficial for this. So this has been kind of long-winded, but I, I do think that it's worth talking about the regenerative medicine options as we're starting to, you know, continue to move through this COVID-19 epidemic. You know, unfortunately, these things are not available uh, yet for treatment of these diseases. I mean, these uh, exosomes are out there. I use them in my practice. Stem cells are out there. I've used them in my practice. And these things are out there. They're very safe. I mean, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of patients have received different types of stem cell and exosome therapies in the past. It doesn't mean they're necessarily effective um, or even safe for COVID-19 patients. We have to study that clearly. But I think that this is one of those times where we need to um, ask the uh, sort of powers that be and let's get this thing going. Let's look at these therapies quickly and let's start getting them into human patients um, instead of just petri dishes and animals uh, to see if they're effective. Um, I will just wrap up by saying that <laughs> if I happen to end up in the hospital with, uh, you know, with a tube down my in my lungs and a machine breathing for me and ground glass uh, opacities all over my chest x-ray, I hope, please, somebody sneak in to the hospital and get some, put some stem cells in my veins and put some exosomes down my ET tube um, before, do that before, you know, walking away and saying that there was nothing else that you could do for me. That's all I ask. <laughs> Thank you guys.